All right, guys, today we're going to do something very special, very rare. We're going to go see Oppenheimer in IMAX 70 millimeter format. If you guys don't know, there are only 30 IMAX 70 millimeter theaters in the entire world, 19 of which are in the United States and only one in the entire state of Florida. Fortunately, it is located just 30 minutes away from where I live. All right, we just parked at the garage across the street from the museum, $15 parking on the weekends, but this video is not about reviewing the specific theater. We're going to just see the experience of IMAX 70 in general for anyone either trying to go see it in a different state or a different country. I got you guys. There it is, the Oppenheimer IMAX. 70, probably presented an IMAX 70 millimeter film at this theater. And like I said, it is in a Museum of Discovery of Science. Theater is right there. The AutoNation IMAX 3D theater, and then the museum portion is over here. This is the inside of the lobby for the massive IMAX theater that they have here at the Museum of Discovery of Science. And of course, we are here for Oppenheimer. Okay, we are officially in line. Like I said, we don't have priority. As you can see, priority's over there. There are two people waiting in line, actually three. And we are just waiting right next to this lovely dinosaur. I don't know the procedure or anything like that. This theater is uh, first come, first serve. So there's even if you have priority boarding, you still have to kind of make your way to whichever seat you can get first. There are no assigned seats like most theaters, which is good and bad, I guess. Mostly bad, I've heard bad things about it. If you're stuck in the front row for a movie of this size, or a screen of this size, you're gonna have a bad time. Quick update, it's 12.18, the movie starts at 12.50. The first showing had to have gotten out of by now, but look at the current view of the line situation. More people are starting to come in. It looks like the movie just let out, so we should be going in as soon as we're done cleaning. And I think they have to redo the film. It's a really big film reel, so should be going in soon. Here's the current situation with the line. All right, they're letting in priority right now. These people paid like about 15 bucks extra just to get in before us, regular folks. Thank you. All right, we are officially going inside. Oh, this is nice. See the, holy shit. Thank you. Holy shit. Check out the screen, six stories tall. Six stories tall. 60 feet high by 80. This is the size of everything. Holy shit. Can't imagine sitting all the way in the front row down there. If you come here late enough, you might. I'm doing an ultra wide shot of this screen just to try to fit everything in it. Please stand up and move over so that all vacant seats toward the center of that row are filled. It's a pretty Thank small you. room. I mean, the walls over there. Big screen and then wall down there. Then you have the back right there. It's not an average size theater, I don't think. It is very steep though. It's by eight stories, 114 speakers, 52,000 watts of sound. If you'll direct your attention to the rear of the theater and look up, you'll see our projection booth. Can we give a round of applause to our projectionist as loud as you can, Woo! folks? Come on. You can get louder than that, come on. For today's presentation, we will be showing trailers on our dual laser projectors, and then we will transition into our 15 70 millimeter film for your feature. Okay, three hours later, we are done watching Oppenheimer in IMAX 70 millimeter format. Like I said, it's very rare to come across a movie theater in this format because there's only one in this state and 19 in the country. So my thoughts on it in that big uh, screen. First of all, the entire movie wasn't really I don't know if you noticed, the movie would go from like full screen to yeah. just slightly minimized, but still really big. Obviously, it's a six story tall screen. I expected the entire movie to be like that, but I get some shots. You just can't do it in that way. There were some artifacts on the film that we noticed. It was not entirely distracting, but you can kind of just stare at it. If, if a scene is bright enough, you'll see that speck of that looks like hair or I don't know what. And it would just stay there and then just disappear. So I guess a couple of films were just riddled with artifacts. I don't know. Anything else that you might have noticed? Uh, the screen went black for like a second, entirely black, and then it had just a pink and green line in the middle. I, for some reason, don't remember that. The screen is huge, and it was impressive. We sat towards the, not directly center, a little bit to the left, but not all the way on the left side, and uh, closer to the back. The auditorium was not that big. You guys saw some of the footage. 
I recorded before the movie. Thought it was a good seat. It's not that bad. I'm really curious to see how it is closer to the front, not exactly front row, but closer. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't able to test that out. Obviously, the room was packed. There was no empty seat inside the auditorium, so someone had to have sat towards the front, and I feel bad for them, but hey, you got to get there on time. Specifically for this movie theater, they have no reservations for seats. You cannot get assigned seats. You have to show up early enough, make the line like we did, or pay for priority entrance. And you still have to make a line for priority entrance. So be first for that, and you'll have the best luck at getting the, the best seat for the experience. So with that said, I do recommend IMAX 70 millimeters. Would I drive four hours or go out of my way on a road trip to go see it? No. But if it is within, I would say within an hour drive of where you're at, make the drive. It's a really unique experience. For us here, it's the largest screen in South Florida and it is well worth the hour drive. Just don't drive more than that because you can just find a similar experience in, in just regular IMAX. Uh, of course, the screen's not as big, but the movie looks great. We saw it the first time in regular IMAX laser at uh, AMC here at Aventura Mall and it was just fine. This was just a, a step up, actually a big step up, massive <laughs> screen, but I did enjoy it. You did not enjoy it, huh? No. The, what, the theater or the format or? Everything. Because I think it's just the way that the theater is, I guess, positioned and like the way they made it. It's extremely small. It's If you're a person that doesn't like tight spaces, like maybe you're claustrophobic or any kind of thing, it's not meant for you, I would say. And the screen is not like a regular screen, which obviously, but it's like, it's not straight. It's like weird it's like and I, th I think that's because of how the seating is yeah. we are like so movie theaters have normal stadium seating but this is like it's like uh i want to say like a planetarium at, at like a science museum we are at a science museum but yeah. when you go see one of those big screen stuff if you're from miami frost museum of science that screen like that's how the seating is it's very steep and they pack so many seats and rows into a small space so there's little leg room mm -hmm. if you're trying to get in front of somebody to go cross to go to the restroom or whatever so the, in that aspect it is uncomfortable i did not have a terrible experience i had a pretty decent experience the seats weren't too bad my legs didn't hurt like the first time overall i liked it she didn't like it but hey we're not going to see every movie at this theater i don't think it's meant for that i think it's for those rare films that are shot in imax 70 such as oppenheimer and i enjoyed it if you do decide to go, try to get priority entrance, which for us, surprisingly, wasn't really necessary. As long as you're kind of first in line, that's perfect. Um, but if you're able to, I don't think where we sat was the best. I think you would- I liked it. I think, personally, in my opinion, you would have to sit further back because for me, I don't know if it's maybe because I wear glasses, my eyes got tired because it's like, I don't know if, and my neck, I wasn't sure if I wanted to be like this or like this. And because of the position of the seating, I don't know if I'm blocking someone behind me or if they can see enough. So I don't know. It's kind of weird. But personally, I would choose a little further back, higher. I, I think that we arrived about an hour, a little over an hour before our showtime and nobody was there. I mean, we sat down in the cafe, ate something. And then we proceeded to make the line and we were first in line for the regular general boarding. I think closer to the film's release, lines were crazier and, and people were lining up for hours. I heard people were driving from like out of town, maybe even out of state, just to get the experience in IMAX 70. So the hype has died down a little bit and we were able to just get there an hour before the movie. But yeah, I mean, I think the movie's run is almost done. So this video is kind of okay. like maybe for the next movie that's going to be in IMAX 70. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have seen the movie in IMAX 70, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments. I'm very curious to see if more people liked it or didn't like the format, whether your particular theater was different than my theater that we just went to, how your experience differed from mine. Let me know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button and the like button. It helps get the video out to more people, and I really appreciate it. So with that said, I'll catch you in the next video.